Cy Hirsch has a piece at his Substack account entitled How America Took Out the Nord Stream Pipeline. The New York Times called it a quote unquote mystery, but the United States executed a covert sea operation that was kept secret until now. For insight into this, let's turn to our first guest. He works with Tell the Word, a publishing arm of the Ecumenical Church of the Savior in inner city Washington. His 27-year career as a CIA analyst includes serving as chief of the Soviet Foreign Policy Branch and preparer briefer of the president's daily brief. He is co-founder of Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, and he is, of course, Ray McGovern. As always, Ray, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So Cy Hirsch writes, last June, the Navy divers operating under the cover of a widely publicized midsummer NATO exercise known as Vault Ops 22 planted the remotely triggered explosives that three months later destroyed three of the four Nord Stream pipelines. This is according to a source with direct knowledge of the operational planning. What I'll say, Ray, is usually when we hear of unknown sources, we tend to question the veracity or validity of the piece. But if it's Cy Hirsch, I got to give it it. I got to give it its due. Ray McGovern. I know Cy Hirsch. I know you do. I know him to be. <laughs> I know him to be a meticulous uh, reporter, uh, winner of five Polk Awards, Pulitzer Prize, you name it. Back in the day when honest reporters were so honored, um, this piece has the all the earmarks of uh, size, meticulous re- uh, approach, and uh, he clearly has a very good source who felt a. Well, he felt the constitutional obligation to honor his or her oath to the Constitution of the United States, which is the supreme oath any of us take, and that is uh, to make sure that you tell the truth, especially when the Constitution is being violated. Now, this was an act of war, pure and simple. (laughs) Curiously enough, it was against Germany. And uh, curiously enough, uh, President Joseph Biden at a press conference in the presence of the Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, uh, said this was going to happen if Russia invaded Ukraine. And of course, uh, he was asked, well, how do you do this? I mean, how can you how can you be so confident that this will Nord Stream will be killed? And uh, Biden said, well, just, you know, trust me, it's going to happen. And so she, bilingual, the uh, Reuters reporter, turned to Scholz. And this is not widely available right now for obvious reasons. And she said, well, I mean, do you agree with that? I mean, hello? Uh, How do you feel about this? (laughs) And this hack, this political hack said, we do everything together. We do everything together. We will be together on this. Now, so that's available now. It's available, not Cy Hirsch's piece yet, but that interview is available in Germany. You know, I describe Olaf Scholz as kind of the epitome of the abused spouse. <laughs> I mean, stands there and is abused not by his master, Joe Biden, not only by, but also by this uh, hack that he has as foreign minister. Her name is Bialbok. Uh, she is the the most uh, vociferous of all the people uh, saying that we are at war. That's what she said. We are at war with Russia. So uh, the question will be, uh, it has been 90 years, count them, nine zero years since the Nazis were making a push for power in Germany. Okay, what happened? The Reichstag, the the German parliament building was burned down at the end of January 1933. Okay, Uh, what happened? The Germans caved. The Nazis didn't have a majority but they scared the living daylights out of German citizens. First of all, Social Democrats gave in. Next of all, 
the Central Party, the Catholic Party. No one spoke up. We know the rest of the story, all right? Now, sometimes history is replete with ironies. Here it is exactly to the month, 90 years later, will the German people uh, acquiesce in their energy, in their industry, and in their, their bodies being frozen out this winter? Or will they rise up and say, look, uh, Mr. Mr. Scholz, you don't know what the hell you're doing, and neither does Bayerbock. Get out of here and replace that government. Now, key to all this, of course, is the fact that I already mentioned Cy Hirsch's piece has not been published in Germany. The New York Times hasn't published it. The major media haven't published it. Where did Cy have to publish this? On Substack. Now, at one point, he had a friend at the German newspaper Die Welt, and they published an incredible expose on Syria. It turned out to be true, but Tsai couldn't get it published anywhere else. He used to publish in the New York Times, then in the New Yorker. He has been banned. So the question is, will it be possible to inform, the, to inform not only American people, but in, more important, the German people that they've been had, okay? This is, this is depriving them of livelihoods and industry. Will they, unlike 90 years ago, act like adults, stand up and say, now uh, we've had it uh, blowing up our, our gas pipeline. That's too far. We're going to look at things differently. First and foremost, our involvement in Ukraine. Ray, um, domestically here. Uh, in this uh, piece, if it is b- to be believed, which I believe it, and it certainly warrants a, 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 an internal investigation here, the Biden administration admitted that what they were doing was an act of war, which means they understood that only Congress could, in fact, con- constitutionally um, clear that action. And they, with malice and a forethought, took action to mitigate their accountability to the Constitution and Congress, a And Joe Biden was the head guy there. He was the man that eventually they decided rather than just put explosives on it. Apparently, Biden wanted to give the word for when it was done. This is an impeachable offense. This is a requirement of Congress to act on it. Your thoughts on um, Congress not acting on it? I don't suspect they will. And and, and if there will be ultimately in long term any ramifications for that, your thoughts on that anyway, uh, Ray? Well, again, um, if the uh, if the big tree falls in the forest and there's no one around to hear it fall, does it make a sound? It is incredible how the New York Times uh, actually I've taken to calling uh, the New York Times the new journal the the new yellow uh, the new yellow Times uh, after yellow journalism, which uh, most people know. Uh, this, uh, you know, it is what you do when you, and when you exaggerate or slant things beyond the truth, the, the new yellow times can prevent this from being heard and prevent more, more important now, uh, corroboration from being a voice. We have corroboration now from Gil Dottoro in, in Brussels, Larry Johnson in Tampa. It's coming in. And so I applaud the source that told Cy Hirsch all this information. I believe it implicitly. Cy has never been wrong on really important issues like this. As I say, he's meticulous, and he was distraught. And I know this personally. Distraught at all this stuff about Russiagate. He and Bob Perry used to, my mentor, Robert Perry, who consortium news, used to commiserate on the phone and, and, and you know, what's happened to the, to the media. So here, we, here again, we have the media right in the middle of this thing. Uh, only Tucker Carlson has had the uh, cojones so far <laughs> to play this story. Will it go further? I just, well, I don't know. I I try to be the optimist. Can the New York Times, can the major media suppress this indefinitely? Well, I suppose they can. Uh, They've they've suppressed other stories equally important, like the fact that 
the Russians are proven not to have hacked into the DNC, uh, that the proven that the Russian um, the Russian offensive there with Facebook uh, amounted to nothing. So if they can deceive the American people as the American people are willing to be deceived, then you know this will not have its desired effect. The fact that that uh, Sai had to go on on Substack to do this is really a, a lurid manifestation of the fact that not even the most the most prized, the most meticulous investigative reporter in the United States could not get this published elsewhere. That speaks volumes. Part of this piece side discusses meetings that Victoria Nuland and Anthony Blinken and Jake Sullivan held in the executive office of the president where they debated options for an attack on the pipeline. And he writes that the CIA argued that whatever was done, it would have to be covert. And at the time, the CIA was directed by Bill Burns, as Sy describes him, a mild-mannered former ambassador to Russia. I know you know Burns well. Uh, He says that Burns quickly authorized uh, a CIA working group whose ad hoc members included someone who was familiar with the capacity of these Navy deep sea divers. Your your thoughts on Burns' involvement in this? I do know Burns. Um, He let me, (laughs) well, in effect, shame James Clapper by pointing out to an audience um, that Clapper had admitted that he, uh, that he, fudged the evidence on weapons of mass destruction before the attack on Iraq. Uh, Burns was, uh, some of us hoped that he might be the adult in the room, but Burns is the epitome of a cog in the the wheels of the system. He's a State Department type. He got to be number two in the State Department, and you don't get to be number two in the State Department unless you salute. Uh, Whether it's a harebrained scheme or not, you salute. Well, here you have the epitome of a harebrained scheme. Uh, did uh, did Burns salute? Yes. As soon as the president says do it, he turned to his people and he said, "Do it." And they they rubbed their hands and said, "Oh man, this is going to be fun. We can do this. We can work with the Navy. We can do it." Okay. Now, what did the analysts say? Well, Burns didn't give a. Rats patootie about what his analysts say, but Cy Hirsch includes the notion that this salmon analyst said, "Yeah, this is really crazy. This is really stupid. This is going to come back to bite us." That's what we always <laughs> used to say on cockamamie schemes like this. What's the point here? The point here is that the operations people at CIA get all the money, get all the attention, and get all the influence over whatever director comes in. And another side lesson here is that if you're going to pick a director for the CIA, you don't go to the State Department for a yes man. You don't go to the Congress for somebody who compromises, for God's sake. You you find somebody like Admiral Stansfield Turner, four star, who had made his own his own mark on life and was not going to take any crap from anybody else. It's going to tell the truth. He's the last guy we had like that. Uh, God forbid we keep having these, uh, well, these bureaucrats that salute when the president says jump. One thing I I did want to ask you, I had some thoughts. You know, the last, interesting, the last uh, sentence where, you know, whoever the source is says, oh, yeah, they did this thing. It was a brilliant operation, blah, blah, blah. He says, the only flaw was the decision to do it. Here's what it seems to me. I'm guessing. It seems like it came from somebody in the Pentagon. Based on the knowledge, they basically said, you know, these idiots in the executive department, that not a good move. Ah, CIA was in, not real smart. Safe, the State Department, ah, bad move. The Pentagon wasn't mentioned. And there are generally some, I have heard recently that there are some pragmatists. It almost seems like there may. Well, anyway, your thoughts on the origins of this, if you have any. Well, all I can say is that Cy Hirsch has proven for about 40 years now uh, that he is a trusted journalist. And when someone, and I suspect it, you know, it aptly pertains to this particular source, 
when someone sees that an act of war has been has been committed by our government against all the <laughs> against the constitution maybe maybe not against the us designed rules based order <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we all swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, this guy took that seriously. I suspect he went to that little corner in that bar where Cy meets his, and I know where that is, meets his sources, and he told him this whole story. Cy said it only took him three months. I, I believe that. And American people, it's eminently believable. The question is the fallout and whether whether the mass media can prevent this story from seeking into the consciousness of Americans who have been taught, who have been brainwashed over the last seven years, okay, seven years now, to hate Russia, okay? Uh, Will Rogers had that wonderful aphorism, the comedian way back a century or two ago. Will Rogers put it this way. He said, the problem is this. It's not what people know. It's what people know that ain't so. That's the problem. And the people think that the Russians are uh, are just evil to the core. That Putin, here's an example. Okay, at the time when Cy Hirsch's story is going out, here's the New York Times on February 9th, Okay, uh, a, a yellow journalism piece by a fellow named Constant Mehu, a Frenchman apparently. And it says that uh, uh, Vladimir Putin was personally responsible for killing the 298 aboard Malaysian Airlines MH17 over Ukraine in July of 2014. Now it says that in the title, it says that in the first paragraph, and third paragraph says, well, we can't prove that Putin was really, give me a, <laughs> <laughs> give me a break, okay? So this is a day when they should have been featuring size research. They're still at it, blackening Putin first and foremost, the rest of the Russians, and you know, this was consequential. Uh, remind, let me remind you that after the coup in Kiev, after the annexation of Crimea, the U.S. could still not get the Europeans to shoot themselves in the foot by sanctions. It was only after Malaysian Airlines MH17 was downed, according to the New York Times, by Vladimir Putin himself, that they could get real sanctions that bit the Europeans more than it bit anyone, including the Russians. So this was consequential. This was the beginning of really strict sanctions. And I just wonder if the, the West Europeans and the East Europeans will ever wake up and say, you know, this is a <laughs> this is a bad deal to get involved with what the U.S. wants because they want war with Russia. And this is going to come to what the Chinese used to call a no good end. Ray McGovern, as always, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate that analysis, and we look forward to having you back. I am most welcome.